we don't lift him up. Mm, right. If we who are his children yes, refuse to honor him with the praise on our lips yes, and let folk know Jesus said, if I, if I be lifted up, yeah. I will draw all men. And the first time I've been able to sing in about a month or so. So I'm just thankful to sing with you today. All right. But I, I, I just, uh, just grateful. I'm grateful to be with you today. Amen. Amen. I'm grateful and I'm thankful as well. Uh, and I, I know we're on this time constraints. I asked him to be very careful. We've got a lot of things we're going to do today. Amen. So we're going to try to get right into our lesson uh, so that we can try to get through it today. Wait, Chose three scriptures. All of them, three different passages. And I want to draw three different thoughts to support one idea. Yes, sir. All right. That's what I'm going to try to do. All right. And I may not be successful. But there, some of these are scriptures you've heard and you are familiar with. The other two may be a little bit different, but they say something very important. In Proverbs chapter 3, verses 5 through 10, and we'll just probably read 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all of thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. In all thy ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct thy paths. Amen. In Deuteronomy 13, verse number 4, and it's on the board. You shall walk after the Lord your God and fear him, and keep his commandments. Obey his voice. You shall serve him and cleave unto him. 1 Samuel 12, 24. Only fear the Lord and serve him in truth with all your heart. For consider how great things he has done for you. All of these are uh, encouragements to trust in God above self. Respect, obey, and serve, and cling unto God. And the reason why you do that is found in 1 Samuel 12, 24. Because of all that he have done for you. It said, you know what it said? Respect him and fear the Lord and serve him with all your heart. But first of all, consider what he have done for you. Amen. Now, you know, this is a personal thing. I can't really say I can speculate what God have done for you. I can only really authenticate and explain what God have done for me. Amen. Yes. When we start seeking the Lord and trying to do God's will, we need to reference what God have done for us. Saved us from a life of sin. Took us out of the world of, of wrongdoing and placed us in his kingdom and family. Provided uh, redemption and, and salvation ultimately Amen. through his son's death on the cross. I can only speak today about what God have done for me, but you ought to consider yes. when you're saying to yourself, I want to do more for God, you must consider everything that God have done for you. Yes. It puts a perspective on why you serve him. Yeah. It puts some kind of uh, meaning to the worship. It means meaning to your service when you understand everything God have done for you. Yes, Today, I want to talk about purpose and motivation. We want everybody to consider doing more 
for God this year than last year. Amen. I said last week, uh, that if you want to do more, it means at least three things. And those three things are that you or I have done something for God in the past. In order to do more, you have to have done something. That you or I admit that what we have done in the past is not enough. And then you and I must admit that we have more that we can do. Now we understand that. And we know we haven't done it all. We haven't poured it all out for God yet. And we want to try to get that last ounce, mm -hmm. that last bit out. And it kind of reminds me of the young lad that's in the house drinking milk. He's pretty good about drinking his milk, but he likes to get the last drop out. <laughs> and if he thinks he sees something in there, he shakes it up so he can take a good look and see if it's something sloshy. And if there's still something there, he still wants to try to get every last bit. And I think God wants us to give him every last bit that we have. Every last bit of our energy, of our time, of our money, of our devotion, of our sacrifice. And maybe he'll shake you up sometime to see if you got a little something left in it. Then he's going to try to take the rest of that too. God expects that. God wants that. If you're not willing to give that to God, then you're not really ready to do more for God. Amen? Amen. You ought to be willing to give it all up for the Lord because what? In according to what he have done for you. Right. I want to look at a little information for a second. I was looking for the Greek words or for the term do more. And I, I couldn't find an exact word that embodied the concept. But I came across a word that is close to what I'm trying to get at. And this word uh, means basically abundant. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. The word in the Greek is called perusis, perusos. I don't know, you can't really know how you spell Greek, so, you know. Uh, and it actually, it means in a short definition, abundant, yes. greater, advantage. It means more, greater, excessive, abundant, and exceedingly. Mm -hmm. Advantage. You know, I think of the word do and more in our context. To do means to perform, execute, or commit. And more is a pronoun that means additional and greater. Right. Mm -hmm. So when you add these words, when you add the words together, mm -hmm. and you look at the Greek word perissos, mm -hmm. and you understand it's going beyond what is anticipated. That's right. Going beyond what is anticipated. Going past the expected limits. Mm -hmm. Now, you know, we're happy because you know, this actually, you find this word when it talks about uh, God will give you more abundantly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. More abundantly. He goes beyond mm -hmm. what you expect. Well, beyond any defined limits. God is willing to bless and give. And we don't have a problem with God going beyond and giving us abundantly. We don't mind God giving us more than we expect. We don't mind God loving us more than we expect. We don't even mind God going beyond what is anticipated. The problem is when we reciprocate, we don't want to go beyond what is comfortable for us. So under the theme, what time is it? It's time to do more for God. Yes. We're going to preach today about what does God expect of us. Right. And I want you to make it personal. If you have a paper and it says what does God expect of us, scratch out the us and put the word me. Yes. Amen. What does God expect of me? Right. And the reference is trust in the Lord and, and lean out of your own understanding. Yeah. Seek God and fear him and cleave to him. Mm -hmm. And remember 
Don't forget, consider everything that he has done for you. And now, what does he expect you Amen. to do? Amen. You feel like you, you know, if you, if you get a gift, and I had a birthday yesterday, and I, I'm sharing it with two other members of the congregation, and I'll mention it a little later, because I think that's a unique. <laughs> but I got a gift. And sometimes you get a gift, and you just love it. <laughs> it far exceeds what you thought you was going to get. All right. And, and, and you, you know, to say thank you seems so inadequate, yeah. because you really wanted it. If anything, you feel like you want to do something special for that person or persons just to show how much you appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Now, when I look at God and understand what he has done for me, mm -hmm. a mere thank you is not enough. Right. A mere acknowledging it is not enough. Yeah. But I need to be willing to do something to show my appreciation for what God has done for me. Yeah. I'll be willing to do something about it. Yes, and so that's where we're at now. So we need to consider what God has done for you or for me. In the same way when we consider all that Christ has done, he died on the cross and it continues to cover us even to this day. In John chapter three, verses 16 through 17, it's on the board and we hear it all the time. We want to read it for me. For God so loved the world. What did God do for me? That he gave his only begotten son. God loved the world and guess what? I'm a part of uh, that world. Yeah. Yeah. I'm a part of the world today, but he, he, he thought about the world then, the world before, and the world to come. Yeah. And God so loved the entire world, he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth on him have what? Should not perish. Should not perish. But have everlasting but have life. Everlasting life. Uh, what have God done for you? Everlasting life is right at your fingertips. Right. It's right at your fingertips. Mm -hmm. Ephesians chapter 5, verse number 25. What has God and Christ done for me? What does it say? Husbands, love your wives. I hope so. Even as Christ also loved the church. You see, now this is that's the key. Husbands, love your wife. Had the greatest example of love is how Christ loved the church because he gave his life for it, right. sacrificed for it. Husbands ought to love their wife, and we'll talk about it one day, maybe around the 14th of February. Husbands, love your wife and not love the wives. Husbands, love your wife and not other man's wife. Husbands, love your wife. That's your personal wife, your choice, your wife. That's another story. That's <laughs> another story. When you understand what God has done, it just seems so inadequate to tell God, thank you. Yeah. He's given you eternal life and you didn't deserve it. Yeah. And if you look back on last year, I'm sure you'll find countless things that he's done for you in your life. Amen. He helped you through the hard times. It, it, the difficult moments from last year, we had several at this congregation. Yeah. Yeah. And guess who helped you get through it? And now some are going through some difficult times even now. And guess what? God's going to help you get through it. Yeah. And so when God is doing all of that, yet a mere thank you seems callous. And it seems unconcerned. Thank you. Oh, thank you. You need to do something more than that. Yeah. I want to reference Ephesians chapter 1, 3 through 13. What have God done for us? It's a long passage. It kind of broke it down to some concepts I want to talk about. Yes, sir. Come on. What has God done for us? It's on the board for those who are writing notes if you want to write them. And if you don't, that's fine. What has God done for you? He's blessed you. Amen. Yes. Blessed you with every spiritual blessing in the heavenly realm. Yes. Right. Right. And God, I mean Christ, uh, uh, he has their benefits for being in a relationship with him. Right. The blessings now show that when you are a member of the church of Christ, you now have the blessings of an intimate relationship with God. Yes. Right. So he blessed you in Ephesians 1 verse 3. He has chosen you, Amen. Ephesians 1 verse number 4. Yes. The Father God chose us. And that emphasizes that salvation depends 
totally upon God and not on what we do. It's our God chose us by the calling of the gospel. He chose you. He's provided for you by his, by his uh, uh, infinite wisdom that he's got all of these things and it's not on you. You might be a nice person. You might be a nice chap. But that don't mean you deserve salvation. He has chosen us. We can't take the credit. All we can do is express our gratefulness and thanks for his wonderful acts of love for us. He has predestined us. In Ephesians 1, 5 and 11, it says that he predestined us. He means he marked us out beforehand. Yes. It's another way of saying that salvation is all of God's work and none of our own doing. Amen. He's provided this salvation. All we have to do to participate is to accept his terms. Amen. Now, you know what's strange? We, don't, we, we will accept anybody's terms but God. Wow. Go down to the car dealership. They tell you how much you're going to have to pay, right. how much you got to dip down, how much you're going to give a month, yes, and you accept the terms. Right. You get on the internet, yes, it'll say, will you check the box if you accept the terms and conditions? Yes, Most of us don't even read it. <laughs> <laughs> we don't even read what it means. Right. <laughs> they ask, don't they ask you? Yep. Do you accept the terms and conditions? You yep. check the box. Right. And you go on in life with everything we do, mortgages and this and that, and even when you get jobs, check the box. You agree with the terms and conditions, and we do it. But when God comes, I don't want to be baptized. Oh, Lord. I don't want to be baptized. <laughs> I've done enough. God has terms and conditions, but we want to try to tell God, I don't want to give anything. I don't want to give to God. I don't want to serve. You got all these things you're trying to tell God, but you want the salvation. Yes, sir. Yes. I challenge you. Go to any dealership in this area. Sit down and tell them, I'm not paying, but I want the car. I'm not giving a down payment, but give me the vehicle. You can't depend on any monthly payments. I'll pay you as I decide. If, it sounds, if the car is still running, I'll give you some money. Soon as I have trouble, stop giving. I mean, that's how we want to do with God. But yet you're on the car, you don't move with that, because you know what's going to happen? In the middle of the night. In the middle of the night. They got low jack on these cars now. You can't, you see you can hide a car out for a few months till you got your money straight. Hey brother, can I leave this car in the garage for a couple months till I can get straight? You know, but now you can't even do that. They come knock on the door and say, we want the car in the garage, brother. They know because they know where the car is at. But yeah, we want God. We want God on our terms. I've been baptized before. I've been this, that, and the other. I did. If you want God's conditions, yes, sir. if you want his salvation, right. you got to obey his conditions. Yes, That's just the life we live. That's just what God says. He has conditions. I must continue on. Come on. He has made us accepted. Even if we don't deserve it, and especially in this context with Ephesians, folks that were unaccepted under the old law, God has accepted us through grace and truth. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And making us, uh, well, we, not making us, but giving us a chance to become participants in his salvation. Yes, sir. He has redeemed us in Ephesians 1, verse number 7. Yeah. Redemption was a price paid. To gain the freedom for a slave. Yes, sir. When you want to get a slave free, you had to redeem them. Yeah. You had to pay the redemption. We were slaves to sin. Couldn't stop sinning. Couldn't even figure it out. Jesus Christ died for the redemption uh, to free the slaves. Uh, and I just want to say, I'm not ashamed to be a slave uh, and God redeem me. I don't want to be a slave to any man, but I don't mind being a slave to God because God redeemed me with the ultimate price of Jesus Christ. I am redeemed. And I was a slave to sin, and now I got a chance to stand as a free man. What has God done for me? He has uh, bounded toward me. Mm -hmm. His grace has been lavished on me. Ephesians 1, verse number 8. Yes, yes what has God done for me? He has made known unto me 
When you submit to Jesus Christ, your Savior, through obedience in God's word, the Holy Spirit reveals to you the Father's plan and how it works for you because in Acts 2, 38, once you accept and are baptized, God then what? He gives you a part of him. Amen. Amen. Gives you a part of him. Thank you, brother. I'm going to try to work under your, your restraint here. <laughs> He's given us an inheritance. Yeah. Ephesians 1, verse 11 yeah. and 14. Yeah. A her inheritance is something that you don't earn. Mm -hmm. It's something that's bestowed upon you. Right. It's given to you. Yeah. Now, I don't know. My dad's been doing a lot of extra spending. And I don't know if he's, if he's taking care of my inheritance like he should. Yeah. He looks like he's spending too much of it. Uh -oh. But my inheritance would come after he's gone. He ought to give me something that I haven't earned. Now, I have one message to him. Spend it all. And I'll tell you that why, because I'm spending all mine. <laughs> you want something today, you better get out and work for it. Yes, you better get out and work for it. But inheritance here is something that you have not worked for, that has been given to you as a gift. Right. As a gift, and God has given you inheritance. Mm -hmm. And then he has sealed it. Ephesians 1.13. Yes. Right. The word seal means to stamp with a signet or a private mark for security and preservation. Literally and figuratively, when something was sealed, then it could not be opened unless the folk had the right to open the seal. When they put that signet ring on that wax and it was sealed, you better not be tampering with it. But God has sealed his, de his desire to save us. It's been sealed with the Holy Spirit. It's sealed with Jesus' sacrifice. And it's like a private mark that he's going to give us exactly what we deserve in the end. Amen. Wow. God is great. How can I thank him for everything he's done for me? What could I possibly do to show my appreciation to him? How do I show appreciation to someone who loved me so much? How do I show my appreciation for somebody that's been so uh, understanding? Yeah. God wants us to be thankful. Yeah. God wants us to be grateful. Yeah. God wants us to be appreciative. Yes, but is that enough? These last few scriptures, brother, I'm gonna close it out. Psalm 63 and three. Yes, what can we give him? We should give him our praise. Amen. Amen. We should do more in worshiping him. The psalmist says in Psalm 63 and 3. Is it on the board? Because thy loving kindness is better than life. Uh-huh. My lips shall praise thee. Think about Amen. it. Yeah. His loving kindness is better than life. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Now I, I, I have to kind of sit back sometime and just let scriptures just soak in. Mm -hmm. His loving kindness is better than life itself. Mm -hmm. My lips shall praise thee. Yes, sir. Some folk don't want to sing. I couldn't sing and wanted to sing. But you have an opportunity to praise him, not only in the service, but to praise him in the community. Yeah. Praise him in the, in the job. Praise him everywhere. Let folk know that his loving kindness is so wonderful to you. Right. We ought to be willing to praise him. Amen. And if I want to praise my God, I should keep his promises. Right. I should do more and more in obedience to him. Psalms 116 verse 18, what does it say? I will keep my promises. I will keep my promises. To the Lord. You made promises to God? Mm -hmm. Resolutions and I'm going to do better, I'm going to do this, do more. That's a promise. If you say I'm going to do more for God, that's a promise. Amen. That is a promise to God. Here the psalmist says, I will what? Keep my promises. Keep my promises to the Lord. To the Lord. In the presence of all of his people. I'm going to show everybody. Mm -hmm. Not only in the church and his folks, I'm going to show the folk out there. I'm going to show them on the job that I'm going to keep my promises. Yeah. I'm not going to talk filthy, vulgar, or inappropriate. I'm not going to curse and act, act up and my uncle say act a monkey. I'm not going to do it. I'm just not going to do it. Because I want to show folk that I keep my promises. I want them to know that I am a child of the king and a child of God. I pledged 
to follow his commands. And Jesus said in John 15, verses 14, what does it say? You are my friends. You are my friends. If you do what if you, you do, command you. You know, you can't be a friend of God and not do what Jesus says. You can't be a friend of the Lord and not do what he says. Right. I don't know what you are, but he's saying you're not a friend of mine. And I'm asking you a question. How do you treat your friends? How do you love your friends? What would you do for your friends? And is not Christ worth more than your friends? In Proverbs 18, 24, it says, A man that has friends must show himself friendly. But there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. And I don't know, I got some close brothers, but Jesus is closer than they are to me. In John 15, verse 13, says, Greater love have no man than this, um, than a man lay down uh, his life for his friends. Uh, I don't know about you, but Jesus, uh, when he died on the cross of Calvary, he didn't die just because of some sins that he had done. Uh, he didn't die because he had wronged and, and uh, offended others in the sense that he broke the law. He died because of folk like me that was dripping, dripping with sin and needed redemption. Uh, he came and he suffered on the cross of Calvary. That's a friend. That's a friend that said, no, 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 don't you suffer, my friend. I'll step in and take your problem today. You know, it's like somebody getting a beating and be thought, no, 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 don't beat Brother Sterling. Come here and beat me for a while. I'm going to be your friend. Oh, Brother Bowman got some problem and they're trying to hurt. Don't hurt Brother Bowman. Come here and beat me for a little while because I want to make it right for my friends. That's how Jesus was when it came to us. We were dripping with sin. Death was our ultimate challenge. We knew we were going to have to go down and go down hard. But Jesus stepped in and said, no, no, no. I'll take it for you. Amen. I'm going to take it for you. If you ask me, what can you do for Jesus? What has he done for you? Consider what he's done for you. That's a little more, but I'm going to wait. I'm going to stop here. What has he done for you? When I think about it, <laughs> I'm 58 years old. Yeah. Yes. Yesterday, Amen. in a few days, I'm going to have a 15 year anniversary from when I was in the hospital Amen. on the deathbed. Amen. And they told me I wasn't going to make it. I, I know many of you were there yeah. and came to visit me, but I, I don't remember because I was unconscious. Yeah. And, I, and I, they told me to get my life in order, told my wife to get things in order. And she was preparing, telling folk to go in and see him because he's not gonna make it. Well, she had faith I would, but she was just in case. I think about that because when I think about what God had done for me, Amen. I don't have an excuse. Oh, my Lord. I don't have an excuse. They said he'll never walk again. And I walk. They said he'll be crazy as a Betsy bug. And I'm still half crazy. But I'm just half crazy, though. I'm just half crazy. They said he may not ever talk again, but I'm still talking. He said all kind of things. But you know what? I don't have any excuse why I can't serve God. Because when I start considering what he's done for me, he's done so much, I cannot thank him with a mere word. I have to give him my life. Got to give him my life. I don't have any choice. Guess what? He gave me life. 15 years now. 15 years since that day. And I don't like to think about it too much. But every once in a while, my wife reminds me. And I'm glad she does because you know what? I need to remember. That's right. Yeah. It says, fear the Lord. That's right. And it said to consider what he has done for you. Amen. And if you do that, then what does God expect of me? I tell you, he expects you to respect him Amen. for what he has done. Amen. And if you respect him, you'll be willing to serve. If you remember the church and you know you haven't done enough, but even more than that, you know you've been sinning by making a promise that you could not keep or you did not keep. This is the time now to repent and get it right with God. Amen. This is the time to get it right with God. Say, God, I'm sorry. I could have done better, but I let things get in the way. I let maybe my health and my whatever, and my pains, I let the people and others in the job, and I want to say, God, I am sorry. I repent. Because you know what? When Jesus went to the cross, 
He didn't let nothing get in the way. They were talking about him, that didn't stop him. They gave him vinegar to drink, that didn't stop him. Took his clothes and tore them up, sold them, that didn't stop him. Heckled him, that didn't stop him. Beat him with rods, that didn't stop him. Whipped him with a cat of nine tail, 39, that didn't stop him. And you're trying to tell me what stopped you from doing more for God last year? What is stopping you right now? And when he went on up to the cross, and when they was, if he was standing there looking at him, nailed the other folk to the cross, at that point, that's when I would have stopped. <laughs> I think I'd have stopped when the whipping started personally, but if I'd have made it through the beatings, made it through the scourging, when I got to where the nails were going in the car, that's what I said, done. I can't do it. I did everything I could do. My back is already hurting, and I'm done. But that didn't stop Jesus. No, no, I didn't. And then they begin to nail the nails through his feet and in his hands, and the flesh began to tear in the bones, and the singer began to split. That didn't stop him. Then they rose him up on that cross, and they sucked the, and I remember Brother Vaughn used to talk about how they, they put him on the cross, and they dropped him in a hole, and his body pulled against the nail. That brother used to have me scared and crying. <laughs> I'd be like, yeah, Brother Vaughn. And he was there, and I said, but that didn't stop him. Then he hung there between the twilight and the dawn, yes. suffering and pain, and they was thirsty, they gave him vinegar to drink, and that, that didn't stop him. And then he looked up there and God himself was unable to look. He was there for him, but he couldn't see his son die, and he said, why have thou forsaken me? He didn't forsake you. Right, sir. He still loved you, yes. but he knew that you had to do it, and he couldn't stop you. Yeah. Just so we could have a right to the tree of life. Amen. What are you going to do for him? Amen. You ought to get your life right today. Yeah. Repent of your sins and get it right. Luke 13, 3 and 5, Acts 17 and 30. At the time of this ignorance, God winked at. And the ignorance was that all these different gods were being honored. Even the one, the unknown God yes. on Mars Hill. He said, this is ignorance. He said, well, what God expects you to do is repent. At the time, repent. And he's going to call all men to repent. Yeah. And if you know you need to repent, do it today. Yes. So I'm going to take, we're going to keep it as restore that soul. If you're not a member of the church and you've been trying to have Christianity on your terms, there are terms and conditions you need to check. Amen. You hear the word of God, the gospel, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 4, how Jesus died, lived, died, and rose again. Yes. Understand he did it for you yes. and your sins. Yes. Believe that Jesus Christ is the Son and he died for you. Confess him before men by letting folks know I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God, yes. like the Ethiopian eunuch in Acts 8, chapter 35 and 36. And then, are you finished? No. I confess, no, you're not finished. I believe you're not finished. I heard you're not finished. You don't finish until you're baptized yes. for the right reason, under the right teaching when you're baptized. First Peter three, first Peter six, three and four, you're buried with him in the likeness of his death, raised in the likeness of his resurrection. First Peter 3, 20, 20, 20 and 21, baptism, of what? Now, now save us. Yeah. Acts 2, verse 38. Repent and be baptized. Folks don't want to get baptized because they don't want their hair messed up. I'll tell you one thing, my life is messed up. <laughs> my life is messed up and I need to be baptized Amen. for the remission of my sins. Amen. We're going to sing. I'm, I, I, I extended my invitation, brother. Same on me, brother. Brother Sterling will take my whipping today. <laughs> take him on the back out there and give it to him good. Because he's a friend of mine. We're going to sing. I want you to stand right now. What has God done for you? Consider what he's done for you. And then when you answer the question, what has God expected me? What are you going to do? Think about it right now together. We're already standing. Let's sing. Ah.